Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I am your host, your coach, Karina Calhoun. I am your expert life strategist. Listen, for this particular episode, I am sharing with you a previously recorded episode with a woman who I believe is really truly paving the way, making major impact in the world, who I want to honor and highlight for Women's History Month. Certainly this is not the only woman. These women that I am honoring this month are not the only women, but they are a few that I absolutely wanted to highlight because of certain things that I know that they're doing in the communities around them, how they're loving on the world around them. So I want to share them with you and please feel free to reach out to each and every one of them. Feel free to share the impact that they're making in the world please feel free to amplify them and their message and their purpose in the earth. And absolutely do not forget to go be great. I love you all. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Go be great with Coach Karina Calhoun. I've got another amazing episode for you all today. Y'all know I talk about this all the time, how these episodes are just so phenomenal. And this one is not going to disappoint as well. So today I have Marquita Finley on the show. Hey Marquita, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful, Karina. How are you? I'm excellent, girl. I am excellent. So (laughs) you are known, affectionately known as Q. So just so everybody knows, Going forward, you will hear me reference reference her as Q. So that's why you're going to hear me say that because everybody that she loves and that loves her calls her Q. And I'm in that category. That's right. right. (laughs) So so where is Yes, say that again. You can call me Q. Yes, absolutely. I love it. I love it. So Q, where in the world are you these days? Well, I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am uh, right smack dab in the home of the uh, Black Wall Street, what's known as Black Wall Street. And of course, um, you know, sadly, but yet we're triumphing. Um, Also where the Tulsa, so um, that is my hometown and I'm, I'm really proud to be a Tulsa. I love it. I absolutely love it. Q, you know, I I just learned something. I don't think I was aware of that. So, you know, we're going to have to dig into that a little bit on the show today. Sure, let's do it. So tell me what, you know, I know that there are some people that are watching that are like, yeah, we know about the Tulsa riots. We know about Black Wall Street, we know about these things. However, there are some people that actually don't know and that it doesn't matter what color they are. There's just some Mm -hmm. folks that just don't know. So tell us about Black Wall Street. Tell us about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, You know, you don't have Mm -hmm. to give a dissertation. I'm not asking you to do that, but, (laughs) you know, kind of summarize, you know, you being from there, I'm sure you have a different perspective not even just different, but a really good perspective to be able to share that with us. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, um, we were like, Tulsa was like many, um, you know, towns uh, Mm -hmm. or cities in the United States, of course, you know, when we were segregated. And so it caused us to have to be um, and provide services to one another. So Here in the city of Tulsa, we had an area that was known, famously known uh, as Black Wall Street. And there were grocers and doctors and lawyers and just very prominent and affluent. Um, It was an area uh, full of Black wealth, uh, you know, full of African-Americans and and black folks doing some phenomenal things. And then of course there was an incident uh, that occurred and uh, it happened with uh, a black man and of course a Caucasian woman. There there are 
speculations that the two were were um, actually liked each other, uh, but of course could not be together at that time. I mean, you know, so they, I don't know if we really know how it really went down, but that was the story. And um, when that got out that the two of them were together, you know, and there's other details to it, uh, then of course that caused um, the Caucasians that found out about it to then riot uh, Black Wall Street. So since then, we have been, um, it was very devastating. We lost a lot of people um, and the count we're still uncertain about. In fact, they are still uh, at this moment, our mayor just uh, gave money so that they could continue to try to find bodies uh, to get a decent count. I mean, even up until this day, right? So we just celebrated the, uh, well, memorialized because celebrated is not the term, but we memorialized the 100th anniversary recently and had people from all over the world and, um, you know, come in to learn more about it. But I will say out of the ashes, God is so good to give us um, rebuilding. You see a, just a resurgence of um, businesses in the area. You see a resurgence of people from all across the country coming into Tulsa and you see our progress um, out of the ashes of all that happened. So of course there's more detail. Um, and I will tell you that uh, Tom Hanks, I was just reading that Tom Hanks just learned about what happened here and was asking the question of why did that happen? So it's the celebrities and people of national acclaim that would uh, take the time to you know, bring their cameras here and tell the story. Um, of course, we had a lot of local folks, boots on the ground, doing so many amazing things from writing stories uh, from Eddie Fay Gates to Hannibal Johnson here in town locally, letting people know about the story. And now uh, here we are all those many years later, and uh, this story has really become a national phenomenon. So you know, we are blessed to be here and I'm just blessed to be one of the many, uh, there are still survivors uh, from, you know, families, family members of survivors as well from that massacre that are here. They continue the legacy, but I feel blessed to be a Tolson and also a business owner and continue that legacy of just black excellence and wealth. And not that my skin color should matter about that, but in this context, I think it's very fitting. And um, I just thank God, you know, that we're progressing from such a devastating event. Thank you so much for bringing that to the forefront. You know, I did read as well recently, Tom Hanks found out about it and was, you know, really questioning why did he not know about it? And so I do know that he has typically been one that has pretty much moved with a level head. So I'm curious yeah. to see how that comes through in, in, um, in Hollywood. And, you know, Q, this is, this is absolutely amazing. Again, I had no idea that you were in Tulsa. So you know, I tell folks, typically I do not do pre-show interviews. And so these are, this is what I, what I mean when I say fireside chats. I never know what's going to come out of the interview. And this is just absolutely phenomenal. So I have a couple of questions that I want to ask you. The first, I want to ask you, what specifically are the services that you're providing to the world right now? But then I also want to loop back around to Tulsa and ask you, once you've answered that, what what, um, how has the history of the Tulsa massacre impacted you mm -hmm. to push forward in entrepreneurship, specifically being, like you said, no, your skin color should not matter, but you're a double minority, mm -hmm. you know? And so how has the Tulsa massacre um, actually, and, and then the building of it. I, I, I don't want to just say the Tulsa massacre, but the rebuilding mm -hmm. afterwards, how has that affected your business? 
or your business sense, your business acumen? So those are the two questions that I want to pose to you right now. Awesome. Well, well, let's definitely tackle the first one. Um, you know, so my husband and I started this business. So we are Extraordinary Business Consulting, LLC. And we are a business consulting firm that can work with folks across the nation. Um, we primarily work with uh, for-profit and nonprofit founders to help them advance their mission and grow to scale. And so the way we do that is we do that through coaching and consulting. Um, so I'm a former nonprofit executive twice over, um, as well as, you know, have about 25 plus years in the nonprofit and not-for-profit space. And one of the things that uh, my husband and I saw, well, we saw a lot of folks um, doing wonderful work, boots on the ground, uh, and then when we would meet with leaders and when I would meet with leaders just to find that they still needed um, some things to help them grow capacity and move their mission forward and really be able to put structure um, on their nonprofit. So, you know, the exciting, um, the real assignment for us is to work with founders to help them not only fund their mission, um, that's one part of it, but really to help them um, put those things in place in their foundation so that they remain sustainable and so that they can build capacity. So that's really the assignment. And then we try to do it in an affordable manner. We try to make sure it's cost effective because I was that leader that was asked for champagne results with a bubblegum budget. <laughs> That's what I tell everybody, right? Wow. Um, and so I just remember how many people helped me along the way. There was no way I could have been successful or moved forward organizations without people. Now, like myself, coming alongside me, working with my budget, um, donating in-kind services as consultants, um, talking with me, helping me through things. And so that is what my passion is. And that's what I'm turning around to be for other people um, so that they don't have to feel a certain way like money is a barrier. Now, money is important. But money's not everything. Um, and certainly, you know, God's going to take care of me. And I, I want I want to have my hustle and grind on and have my six figures like everybody else. But I, what I really want to see is the impact of people feeling like they can move, especially the missions and visions that God have given them forward. So... So there it is. I probably didn't talk as much about my business as I should, but definitely talking about the passion of it because there are so many people out here doing great work. And we realize that everything that they're doing is touching somebody on the other side. You know, our company is so blessed that we get to say that we're working with people um, that are working with those that have disabilities. Uh, we're working with with folks that are working with kids in the community to help them learn how to, you know, have the right types of behavior and be successful and offering them programs after school. Those are the kind of things that um, it, it's my passion to see, to see those organizations flourish because you know what's behind them flourishing is them helping other people sincerely. So. So we love that. Yeah, absolutely. So then talk to us about, and then there's a couple of things I want to loop back around to because this is just, you know, you get on on these on these shows and it's almost as if my mind is just blown away at the amount of nuggets that's being released. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this this is so amazing. So my mm -hmm. hope is that people have, you know, I tell my, my folks all the time, 
Don't come to this show unprepared. Make sure you have your right. notebook, journal, your pen, your paper, your beverage of Come choice, on, yeah. and let's get into it because you're not going to walk away empty handed. Definitely. You know, so talk to us about how not just the Tulsa massacre, but then the rebuilding of the business district in Tulsa. Because I did watch um, a documentary recently about that. Um, I'm not a history buff, but I love certain mm -hmm. histories. And so I kind of dive into them. I go down the rabbit hole. But they did talk about the rebuilding of the business district and different things of that nature. And so talk to us about how just the massacre and then the rebuilding, how that has had uh, any type of influence on you as a business owner? Mm -hmm. What I'll tell you is what I feel a lot is pride. You know, um, I always have known that Tulsa is a treasure. And, you know, that's why I say this is this is my hometown. I'm really an Okie from Muskogee, but, but listen, we've been up here for 30 years and and this is where my career has grown and I've grown as an individual. Um, and I love, I love my community. Um, and so we really feel a lot of pride because we've watched it grow. You know, it's one thing when you're stepping into something that's already, you know, done. It's another thing when you've had the opportunity to watch it from where it was to where it is now. And so um, I would I will tell you, even with all that has occurred, um, just being a business that also primarily helps at this moment. Uh, we don't just exclusively serve African Americans, but we serve a lot of Black founders. Uh, there is nothing but pride there. Um, and I don't mean, you know, like a haughty kind of pride, but a really a gratefulness, um, a richness, a love for um, who God made us to be, uh, who we are very victoriously. And so it feels good to be a part of the a community um, that is rebuilding. And it feels good to just, you know, be a business owner in this season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So the first question that I asked you, I said, you know, tell us about your business and, you know, the services and things that you're providing. And I found it interesting because after you went through everything that you went through, you said, well, after saying all of that, I didn't really talk about my business. Well, I find that comment interesting simply because people don't normally think of it like that mm -hmm. because the passion, okay, was what was coming through to you, through from you, rather. And that's what I was getting. So I just want to highlight that for the folks that are listening, you know, kind of take that, jot that down, that when people ask you what services or products or whatever that you're providing, when your passion comes through, nobody thinks that you're not talking about your, because that was just it. I literally felt like I was placed inside of your business. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't even yeah. dawn on me that you didn't, you know, you told us the name of your business. Mm -hmm. You told, you know, you told us who you serve, but the passion that came through, if mm -hmm. more people, so I'm going to say this, y'all know, I say this all the time. Put this episode on repeat and listen as much oh. as you can. Because yeah. what you said, Q, and what came through was an immense amount of passion mm -hmm. for service that you want to give to the people around you. Doesn't matter of color, mm -hmm. but you this this That's passion, definitely. this service was. It was phenomenal. And I literally felt like I was sitting right there with you in the midst of your business. Thank you. Um, you know, and I, I feel like if people really knew my story um, 
and all that I've gone through uh, that God has taken me through really, you know, sometimes we feel like we go through stuff and we wonder why, but I, God put me in a position to be smack dab in purpose. And that purpose, I get to walk out and live out every day. And it is the most joyful time of my life. Now, yeah. I won't tell you that there haven't been some seasons when I'm still like, what am I doing in this business game? <laughs> you know, um, because I'm still a business owner too, right? I'm a business owner helping other business owners um, and walking right alongside them. But I will say when it comes to purpose and being on fire about purpose and, um, you know, really being able to take all of my experiences, the good, the great, the good, the bad, and the ugly, wrap them up in something that I'm able to give people so that, um, you know, they don't have to walk through. What I love is, you know, I was just talking to a young lady uh, yesterday and I said, I've already done this so you don't have to. And she's like, yeah, most definitely. And I'm like, I love the fact that, um, that my life also, if people will take the jewels and the coins that God, you know, has given them through me, it'll save you time, it'll save you effort, it'll save you stress. Um, and, and those are some of the things that we really, that I really hone on for um, nonprofit founders um, and for, for small business founders. You know, that this, this work doesn't have to be stressful. Sometimes it's our mindset um, our mindset or little shifts in the way that we work, et cetera, um, are important so that we don't take on, you know, just that whole overwhelm. And so we focus a lot on that because, you know, it's a lot when you're trying to be a solopreneur or a hyperpreneur or you just new um, to the business. So right now, you know, again, we ju we just love the work. It's it's all about purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you know, one of the things that you talked about early on was that you wanted to become for other people what you what you received. Yes. You know, and I find that absolutely amazing because a lot of times it's the opposite. For instance, I know for myself. I wanted to be, or I want to be for women, what I needed. And so a lot of times you'll hear people in business, specifically the service industry, will, you know, you'll hear them say, I want it, I want to be what I needed. Mm. But seldom do you hear people say, I want to be what I received. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a part of that passion that comes through, you know, because I explain to folks, there's a true difference between passion and purpose. But it sounds to me like you are one of those absolutely amazing and phenomenal few people who has been able to literally, seriously take both of them and marry them together and literally mm -hmm. run with them. And I love the yeah. fact that you are, you know, one thing that I, I ask people sometimes is how are you reaching back and grabbing someone's hand and pulling mm -hmm. them forward? And this is absolutely yeah. one of the things that you are doing. So Q, tell us, for those that are listening that say, you know what, Q is the one. I need to get in touch with Q today. I need to get in touch with her ASAP. Mm -hmm. Tell us how we can get in touch with you and then tell us what the process is. I know you said you do consulting, but you also do coaching. So tell us how to get in touch with you and then just give us a, a short snapshot of what, what to expect from both sides, whether it's coaching or consulting. Yeah, awesome. So uh, you can get in touch with us via our website at www dot extra consulting.com and that's extra without the e so it's xtra consulting.com 
Uh, you can reach us again through the website and you can see um, our offerings, et cetera, on the website. But more importantly, you can reach out and schedule a consultation uh, with me. We do have free consultations that we'll do. And so we'll get on and answer any of your questions and talk with you about our processes and our services, et cetera. Um, and then just a, a snapshot, what they can uh, experience from us is typically, you know, we do a lot of listening um, in our consultations to really figure out what the need is. And then we try to listen. Um, sometimes people will call us and say, you know, that they that they really need grant writing. But when I'm listening to them, I'll find out that what you really need is to get yourself ready to um, be able to apply for a grant. So we, we don't want to do the disservice of um, walking you into something you're not ready for. Um, and we will lovingly and graciously and humbly tell you if we, you know, feel like you're not quite ready because funders uh, expect you to be ready. Even if you're new, if you walk in the ring, they expect you to, <laughs> to be ready, right? So, um, so we really have a program too. We have a couple of phases where if you're not quite ready um, to go out there and apply for grants on a certain level, uh, we'll make the recommendation to you that maybe you should start out with micro grants. And then um, we work to help you move up to be able to apply for some other grants. And then on the, that's kind of the fundraising consulting side, but if you're needing consulting uh, as an executive director, a CEO or a founder of a nonprofit, um, even if you haven't started the nonprofit, we can also help you um, to get all of your documentation um, prepared from your board development to your organizational budget, to your program budget, to your programming, your outcomes, et cetera. We can work your strategic plan. We, because I've done it from top to bottom as an executive, I can usually point you in the direction of which you need to go and tell you um, through best industry standards and tools and practices and even progressive trends, what it is that you should be putting in place so that you have all of your foundation laid out well, um, not just for your nonprofit organization, but then as you start to move forward to apply for funds. So we help you, you know, to get ready in that aspect as well. And then of course, you know, just, um, I'll have EDs come to me with various questions and I serve as a resource to either coach or consult them um, through those particular topics at this point. I mean, like I just had an ED call, um, contact me about, hey Q, you know, um, I'm getting this in-kind gift, what do I do with it? You know, and so then we walk them through you know, here are some resources, here's what you should do, definitely record the in-kind, get with an accountant, et cetera. So I feel like having someone in your corner um, that can just support you, that you can be safe with, um, especially as a founder and an ED is so important. And that is the space and that is the atmosphere that we want to bring to our clients is, you know, you have somebody safe, that you can talk to that's been there, done it, and uh, we can walk you through that. So that's that's pretty much our process. And as you know, I love I love the people. So <laughs> so and I'm gonna give you. It comes through. It literally comes through. <laughs> I mean, it it literally exudes through you, and I'm I'm just extremely honored to to say that I know you. Um, and, by, so, by and I want to. I want to just kind of put this out there. I know some folks are wondering what is an ED that is an executive director. Um, so if you know if you're a have a nonprofit and you are going in that direction, Q is the person that you really want to talk to. You know, mm -hmm. she'll get you right, and like she said, she's gonna hold you tight. 
She's going to love on you, but she's going to get you right. And, you and you right. so you, you recently, I featured you myself in my monthly newsletter recently. And there was a statement that you had made. Uh, it's the motto that your company lives by. And it's the extra in the extraordinary. Can you tell us what that is? Because that, you know, that just, I said, you know what? I absolutely mm -hmm. love that. Man, you know, so um, believe it or not, extraordinary. And, and I know there's some other companies that use it, but this name was given to me about 20 plus years ago um, when I was actually working for Oklahoma State and had a friend and I thought we were going to start a company together, et cetera. And um, it didn't happen at the time. And so even at that time, uh, 20 plus years ago, I knew then that I wanted to name the business extraordinary because we wanted to be able, <laughs> God, even back then, we wanted to be able to take ordinary people such as myself and do extraordinary things because people like us have the ability, yes. especially those of us that know God to do extraordinary things. And so that's why we are, you know, I'm so grateful that the name was still available. <laughs> it was just waiting on me. Um, and so that, that's just the whole motto that we take you from the ordinary to the extraordinary. We're able to, um, our whole goal is to be able to, when you walk into our firm and our company or with our service, that in some way we are going to add value to you or elevate you. We're going to elevate your brand. We're going to elevate your thinking. We're going to elevate your company. We're going to elevate your fundraising. That is always my goal. And if for any reason I cannot do that, then I'm still always looking for ways to do that because I just believe that once you leave us, there should be some type of progression and elevation. So girl, if you know me, I've always been one um, to kind of be that change agent and and just have value progression I guess that's just the way God made me and so you know so we're trying to bring that um to every client that we have and again when I can't do that it's like oh but I work so hard and my team works so hard because we want to make sure that whatever we're doing uh for you as a client that we're giving you value you at every turn um thank glory to glory and that's always moving forward i love it i absolutely love it q you have been an amazing guest here on the show and i am so thankful that you have come in and literally just wrecked the show because from beginning to end you have brought in not the teeny tiny jewels, but amazing jewels and gems that I know we can take away and be encouraged. We can be empowered. We can be educated. We can absolutely go and do what we need to do Ooh, to be extra right. in a good way. That's right. And to go be great. Yes. Absolutely. Well, folks, this has been another great episode of Go Be Great with Coach Karina. We have had on the show today, Q Finley, and this has been an, uh, just an amazing show. As I tell you always, please, please, please put this bad boy on repeat as many times as you need so that you can get the gems, the jewels, the tips, the tools, the strategies that have been released today. And make sure you share it with someone. And remember that if you did not catch uh, the contact information, they will be in the show notes. We do have clickable links in the show notes. So no worries. You can go right straight to it. Thank you all. And I will see you all on the flip side. Bye, everybody.